So I want to show you how to set up a camera. So here's our basic tripod. And it's already out of its case, but if you're not familiar with the tripod, it's literally just open the, open the snaps, let the legs down. There's some interesting things to note about these tripods. Some of them are harder to open than others. Um, hey, Tristan. Yeah, come on in. If you want extra credit, you can. Okay. Um, basically, that's your tripod. On the top here, there is a, there's a, I don't know if you can see it. It's like right back here. There's a little bubble you can use to balance and like make sure the tripod is level. Kind of useful when you're working with video to have, you know, camera on the level. Now you can still do this with it, but so this little thing right here. And my focus is there. So there's a little green bubble right there. You can use that to level your tripod. Also on these legs, and I know for like if you're in 133 or 132, one of the requirements for the video modules is to do a canted uh, Dutch tilt, also an angle. So one thing you can do is you can actually use these levers to pop out the leg a little bit wider. And so then you can set your tripod down at an angle and have your camera sort of canted. Um, you can also use it if your space is funky, you can use it to brace against like a wall or a chair or something. And then it has a couple, if you pop it back down, it's got a couple um, intermediate levels that it can sit at. So that's our tripods. And then you can tighten the head down here. There's, there's a knob on either side that allows you to tighten this so it doesn't rotate or doesn't tilt. And I crank, someone cranked this down on so tight. Anyway, it still moves. Yeah, and up top here there's a crank, there's a, there's a little, you can see that. There's a little thing to loosen up the, the rotate so it turns, turns a little easier. They're fairly smooth um, video heads. I wouldn't really recommend trying to do a lot of panning and tilting with them. If you get practice with them, they're pretty smooth. They do kind of tend to make some noise, which your camera will pick up. They need to be tightened down a little bit. But that is the, the basic tripod. Now, with the video camera, every camera comes with a plate attached and good. I'm glad this one's loose because, so, I'm trying to get up on the screen. So, that plate is loose right in there. Um, you put that on there and your camera's gonna do this. So, there's a little screw right in the middle. Of it. There's a little screw right there. I usually have to grab my keys and the keys are really actually pretty good for this. Don't use the long part, use like the side of it. You just crank that on tight. I'll make sure it's straight. Make sure it's straight first, that helps. And then use your key to just crank it on. I don't know why they get, they get loose after time, people just don't bother tightening them. All right, so then my, my plate is nice and tight on there. And then on the top of my, I don't know if you can see that very well, but on the top of my tripod, there's that little arrow pointing. So you slide the plate on that direction. Um, there's a little button here that kind of will open it up so you can slide the plate on enough so you th it'll just snap in and then it won't come back off. The way to get it back off is I push that button and that releases it. So I just slide it up, snap it in. Then on this side right here, there's a little bit of a you know, right there there's a little crank. Basically you just you position it where you want it. I usually just center the plate, crank that down. Now that's pretty steady on there. I mean, any wobble is actually here now is actually coming from the head itself. This part is loose. Okay, so that's putting the camera on the tripod. Then we have the battery. The battery just snaps into the back end. There's a little big opening right here in the back end. You just slip the battery in and it actually drops. The release is right above. You push the button and lift up and then the battery can slide out. So you Slip it in, let it drop. It locks in place. And then right next to it is our SD card slot. 
So our SD card slot, and I've got a couple SDs here. Um, basically, they're spring-loaded, so if, you, if you're not careful with these, they'll like actually come flying out at you. That happened to me once. They snap in, and then you got two slots, so you can actually load two media, and like this one had 56 minutes on a 16 gig card. This is an eight gig, so I'll probably get only like 30 minutes or less recording time. Um, so you know, you think a 32 gig card is gonna give you nearly two hours. In terms of an SD card, you're gonna need for these cameras a class 10. SD card, probably 16 gigs is plenty big. My suggestion though, is if you're gonna do video and photography, especially if you're gonna get into like using, shooting 4K video, which we have some of the, the Osmo gimbals in there shoot 4K, um, the 360 video that we have a bunch of uh, the Nikon Key Mission 360 cameras. Those, if you put a, a Class 10 only card in there, will heat up the card and it'll, just, it'll ruin the card. So there's another classification called UHS. U3 is the classification. It'll say on the side of the card. So it's basically a read-write speed. So the faster it can write to the card, the more efficient the card is, the less it'll heat up. Um, if the camera is trying to write 4K video to a card, it's probably going to write faster than a Class 10 can write to, so it'll be a problem.